Hello everyone! Today's subject for the lore video is going to be time travel in the world of Warcraft. The gift of time travel was given to Nosdormu by the Titans. Onto you is charged the great task of keeping the purity of time. Know that there's only one true timeline, though there are those who would have it otherwise. You must protect it. Without the truth of time as it's meant to unfold, more will be lost than you can possibly imagine. The fabric of reality will unravel. It is a heavy task, the base of all tasks of this world, for nothing can transpire without time. This was the blessing for Nosdormu granted by Amanful as the aspects received their powers. As a bonus to this, the Titans showed Nosdormu when and how he will die, so that he would never think that his power is so great and terrible that he had to answer to no one. Right at the start, there's already a thing that doesn't make sense to me. Amanful says that there is one true timeline past, present, future. But we've seen in several stories that the timeline can be changed and has been changed. For example, in the War of the Ancients trilogy, we read about Broxigar, Ronan and Kresis who are sent back in time. That on its own wouldn't be a big problem, but they've changed some significant events. Kresis, for example, got the aid of the Furbolgs, which is in the original timeline, would never have happened. The Night Elves, they were quite racist. He also hid away a couple of blue dragons and he aided Malfurion in his battle against Xavius. So by Amon Fool his words, the fabric of reality should have already unraveled and it shows that time is not set in stone. There is a timeline, but apparently it can be altered and it's uncertain what the future might bring. Nosdormu and the Bronze Dragonflight do their job in the Caverns of Time. It's uncertain if they built the caverns themselves or if they were created by the Titans. In the Burning Crusade, Nosdormu started to recruit heroes to help him guard the time waves since the Infinite Dragonflight is trying to mess with some key events in the history of Azeroth. The Black Morris or Black Morass shows us the Guardian Medivh at the moment that he opens the portal to Draenor. Gul'dan and the First Horde did the same on the other side and they are ready to invade Azeroth. You might think that stopping Stopping this moment would be good for the world. No horde means no invasion, which saves a whole bunch of lives. Why do you The problem is that you can't predict the events how they will take place. Without the Horde, the alliance that we know today would never have been made, and we wouldn't be able to later team up against all the greater threats that attacked Azeroth. The Burning Legion invading, Yaxxaran in Northrend, Deathwing in Kedda, all the events where we stood together for the sake of Azeroth. The escape from Durnhold shows Thrall making escape from Durnhold. The Infinite Dragonflight are trying to stop him from escaping, and I think they are doing this for the same reason as they tried to stop Medivh. No Thrall means no new Horde, which means no one to team up with. Your future Thrall must not come to pass. And so, you and your troublesome friends must die. die, die. You might say, well, this is Azeroth and we would find different allies, but apparently the Infinite Dragonflight knows that taking Thrall and the new Horde out of the picture would mean the death of us all. The Culling of Strathholm was a key point in Arthas' road to becoming the Lich King. The Infinite Dragonflight first tries to hide the evidence of the Plague Grain, and then they step in themselves all to stop Arthas from following the path that it would eventually lead him to becoming the Lich King. Prince Arthas on this day a powerful dark has taken hold of your soul. The death you are destined to visit upon others will this day. One possible bad outcome out of this is that we would never make our way to Northrend to fight the Lich King. If we never followed him to Northrend, we might never have discovered about Yaxxaran who was trying to break out of his prison, and he might have been able to take over the world. The Battle of Mount Hyjal was the fight where Horde and Alliance teamed up for the very first time and they took on the Burning Legion. The description from the Burning Crusade says that the Infinite Dragonflight is trying to mess this event up, but I never saw them, so I'm not exactly sure what they did there. These dungeons are the easiest form of time travel. You step through a portal, you make sure that the events happen as they were supposed to, and you get out again back to your own time. The timeline is safe and the events take place exactly as they were supposed to. If we take a look at the novel War of the Ancients, then time travel becomes a little bit more complicated. For those that haven't seen the video on it, Nosdormu got stuck in a time wave anomaly and he sent Kresis, Ronan and Broxigar back in time to the 
the time period of the War of the Ancients. And there they aided the Night Elves and defeated the Burning Legion. I've told you this before, but the book itself made a couple events in Warcraft 3 no longer make sense. As an example, I told you about Tyrande, who no longer recognized the orcs despite her interactions with Proxigar and this orc saving them all. The Greenskins who killed Cenarius? Perhaps, perhaps something more. You all responded with a couple of answers to this and there's only one that really made sense to me. First you gave me the suggestion of the bronze dragonflight erasing the memories like they have in the escape from Durnhold instance. I can see why you would think this since it makes a lot of sense but there is a problem with this explanation. In the novel Stormrage, Malfurion still remembers the axe of Cenarius, the weapon he crafted for Broxigar and he remembers Broxigar's niece Fura. Tyrande still remembers Cressus and even Brawl knows about Cressus's influences in Malfurion's path to becoming a druid, so I doubt that they erased their memories. The explanation that did make sense to me is that before Warcraft 3, Cressus, Ronan and Brox were not yet sent back in time. Let me try to make sense of this. We have the original timeline, from the War of the Ancients to Warcraft 3 to the moment where the group was sent back in time. In the original timeline, the Night Elves they managed to win the War of the Ancients without anyone's aid and time went on without them knowing about the Orcs. Warcraft 3 comes around and Tyrande doesn't recognize them. After that comes the moment where Nosdormu gets trapped in this time anomaly and the group is sent back in time. Have you ever asked yourself if we are going to invent time travel somewhere in the future, shouldn't we already receive visits from time travelers? Normally you would say yes, but imagine this. A circle needs to have a beginning. If you go by the idea that we live in the original timeline, then the future has not yet happened. Nobody has invented time travel yet, so nobody has been able to travel back in time. When our timeline reaches that moment, that's the moment where the circle will begin and our past selves will receive visits from time travelers. The same theory applies to this story, we were on the original timeline to the moment where they're sent back in time. That's the moment where the circle begins, they visit the Night Elves and the Night Elves get a glimpse at an orc. Now the timeline has changed and once Tyrande reaches the Warcraft 3 moment again, she should at least recognize the orcs. The only problem with this explanation is that you would imagine it to have more of an impact. If the Night Elves already knew about the orcs, they might have chosen to talk first before attacking them. That could lead to negotiations with Thrall and a whole different scenario between the orcs and the night elves. But apparently messing with the past didn't cause any major changes to the future and yeah, we'll just have to deal with it. Time is a tangled web. Try not to dwell on all the loose ends. I know this is very confusing and I hope I'm making a little bit of sense here because this explanation leads us to the next time travel subject which is Moruzand. Moruzand is the evil corrupted form of Nosdormu from a possible future. This once again goes against what Amanful had said that there is only one real timeline since this shows that there are several timelines, several possible futures. In a different timeline which is already ahead of ours into the future Nosdormu got tricked by the old gods into trying to subvert his mortality. In other words, abuse his powers to escape the death shown by Amon Fool. We don't know when this took place or why this took place. All we know is that in one timeline, at one point in the future, Nosdormu fell to the whispers of the old gods and abused his powers to become Moruzand. With Moruzand came the infinite dragonflight, which we already saw trying to mess with the timelines even before the cataclysm. Unfortunately, it's never fully explained what the infinite dragonflight were trying to do. We see them trying to prevent Medi from opening the dark portal. We see them messing with Thrall as he tries to escape from Durnhold, and we see them messing with Arthas in the culling of Strathholm. There are a couple of theories going around of course as to why they're trying to do this, for example to prevent Muruzand his death. My idea behind it is that we know Muruzand fell to the whispers of the old gods. That's the source behind him falling into corruption. We don't know how, we don't know why, but that's the source. So it's not hard to guess that he, like Deathwing, now follows their orders. I believe that they were trying to aid the old gods, perhaps even open the way for the hour of twilight. Durnhold and Medivh are both roads that lead to Thrall reforming the Horde and the Horde and Alliance teaming up against several evils. If these two events never happened, then the Alliance and the Horde as we know it today would wouldn't exist. There would be no one to stand against for example Cthulhu or Yaxxaran or even the Hour of Twilight. By messing with Arthas, stopping him from chasing Melganus, that would prevent all the events of the Lich King and us eventually traveling to Northrend and finding Yaxxaran. Was it not for that chain of events, we wouldn't have known until it was far too late to do anything about it and Yaxxaran might have taken over the entire world. 
This is just my theory though, for all we know, they were just crazy and wanted to destroy time itself, or possible futures or alternative timelines. We don't know their motivation and it would be great if Blizzard ever explains this. What we do know is that Moruzant, after failing with messing up the other timelines, now has decided to block all other timelines except the one that leads to the Hour of Twilight, also known as End Time. The Hour of Twilight is described as the moment where the old gods break free, kill us all and rule the world again. The reason behind blocking all the alternative time waves is to prevent Nosdormu from sending us back in time, to retrieve the Dragon Soul and use that to defeat Deathwing. This once again indicates that Moruzant is working for Team Old God and wants the Hour of Twilight to happen. During his encounter he says that he had witnessed the true end time and that this is a blessing we simply cannot comprehend. <laughs> unwitting like a blind writhing worm towards endless madness and despair i have witnessed the true end time this this is a blessing you simply cannot comprehend it makes you wonder what could be worse than all the dragonflies dead, all the heroes dead, all of us dead, but apparently something much worse is out there and waiting for us. Despite that warning, despite that future vision, we still do battle, we kill Nosdormu's evil future self, and we close the loop. You know not what you have done, Amenthul. What I have at seen. last it has come to pass. The moment of my demise. The loop is closed. My future self will cause no more harm. Still, in time, I will fall to madness. And you, heroes, will vanquish me. The cycle will repeat. So it goes. What matters is that Azeroth did not fall. That we survive to fight another day. All that matters is this moment. Every time that Nosdormu becomes evil, falls into the form of Murozant, the time waves will lead to the moment where we kick his butt and end his life. An infinite loop. But here's what doesn't make sense to me. At the end of the Cataclysm, we see that the Aspects lose their power, including Nosdormu. On the Timeless Isle, we are told that the Bronze Dragonflight have lost a significant portion of their power. How is Nosdormu supposed to become Moruzant if he lost his powers? Remember that Moruzant had enough power to stop Nosdormu from sending us back in time. He was equal in power to Nosdormu the Aspect, so he wasn't weakened. Either they decide to give Nosdormu his powers back, or he won't be able to become Moruzant as we've seen, which goes against his little speech. Either the future has been altered, or they go back on the decision of removing his powers. Only time will tell. Despite what the future might bring, at that moment we defeat Murozant and time goes on. Thrall escaped from Durnhold and is now able to team up with the Aspects to defeat Deathwing and stop this Hour of Twilight. The Aspects claim that they are now mortal and that their power is expended. The Age of Mortal has arrived and time travel seems to be out of the picture. Until Mist of Pandaria, where the Timeless Isle appears and those that call themselves the Time Walkers. But that is a story for next week. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. And until next time guys. See ya!